Hey, welcome back. Working with properties of logs of logarithm functions. So in this uh, exercise, we have to evaluate, make it simpler, the given expression. So there's a couple of questions here that we'll go over. So the one right here. So we have to evaluate that. So we have options of evaluating single logarithm every time and then add it together or perhaps use laws of logarithms and we will be referring to those laws right posted here in this little box in the middle. So the first one, the sum of logarithms with the same base. So the key here the base must be the same. So when you're working with a sum of two logarithms or more that have the same base, you can simplify that expression into a product. So product when you add. It's a very similar to laws of exponent. If you recall, a to b multiplied by a to c you added exponents, right? So now when you add logarithms with the same base, you multiply the values inside. So this is why the next step here, after you apply the rule, log to base 4, 2 times 8. And this is why you get 16. So 4 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. This is why the result of that is 2. Okay, now let's talk about this guy here. We have a difference of logarithms with the same base. So for that reason, when we present it with the difference, we're talking about quotients. So what happened when you were working with exponents? a to b divided by a to exponent c is equivalent to a to exponent b minus c. Remember the inverse functions between the relationship between logarithms and exponents. So when you divide, you subtract. When you divide logarithms, and when you subtract logarithms, you divide the values inside. So, the next logical step here would be log of base 3, when you did to the quotient 3 to 4 divided by 4, which is 81. So, why the, the answer is 4? Because 3 to 4 is equal to 81. There you go. Good questions here. Log to base 3 of 9 to exponent 5. So what happened here? This rule here. Log to the base a of a is always 1. Okay, because a to 1 gives you a. So when you have exponent that you can ex uh, factor out outside, you would have, using that rule, in red, log to base a to exponent b of a would be b times log a of a, and since this is 1, so therefore the value of that is just b. So applying this rule here, you can use the following step. First, you multiply exponents, so 2 times 5 gives you 10, so this is why you have log to base 3 of 3 to 10. Then 10 is factored out. If I were to show that step, 10, so the next step is 10 goes out, and we have log to base 3 of 3, which is 1, therefore that is equal to 10. Working with rule that you subtract two logarithms 
but the base is different now log to base 6 and log to base 3 no rule here okay no rule for logarithms why because the bases are not the same so what happened first you rearrange each of two given logarithms you use the negative exponent rule a to negative n is as much as 1 over a to exponent n so starting with the the fraction 1 over 36 you rewrite that as uh, because 36 is 6 squared, so 6 to negative 2. There you go. Similarly, 243 is 3 to negative 5. Now, I can see base 6 and the value inside of logarithm is 6. So this is why you have negative 2 log. Use that rule here when you can factor out the exponent. Negative 2 log to base 6 of 6 and minus you take out that negative exponent so this is negative 5 log base 3 of 3 is 1 so this is negative 2 plus 5 and the answer is 3 there you go next example by the following a single logarithm. So the challenge here is to put it together into one logarithm, not necessarily solving it, but simplifying it. So you have the sum of two, and then you subtract, but all of them, they have the same base, base two. So if you want to apply the rule, of the sum you would have to think of how can i hide this three inside of that logarithm so this is what happened using this rule in reverse order or maybe i'm gonna modify that rule for you so you will see that this can be done like so log to base a of b to exponent n is equal n log to base a b. So this is why 3 goes inside of that logarithm, it becomes the exponent. And now you will be able to combine these two guys into 1. So this is 2 times 4 cubed so this is why you have that portion here minus logarithm to base 2 of 16 then you divide so in total this is 8 okay so the answer here is exactly what you see logarithm to base 2 of 8 can you find a value of that yes but we don't have to. It says use the formula as a single, convert this given formula into single logarithm. Bingo. The next one below. The base is 3, 3, 3, 3. So, only thing that we have to do bring that 3 inside. So that becomes exponent of 2, which will give you 8. And now you see that I have a sum, so this is why you multiply 4 and 6, and also you can rearrange the sum, so you can have log to base 3, 4 times 6 times 8 minus log to base 3 of 8, so this is why it was divided by 8 right here. So the total of that is a single logarithm to base 3 of 24. Voila. Next. Evaluate the following. So we have to work with complex questions and do apply rules and find 
definite value at the end. So, the first thing would happen here, I have to maybe change slightly the thickness of the pen. So let's take a look at the first logarithm here. 27 cubed became 3 cubed, because 27 is 3 cubed cubed. Then you will most likely work together with these two exponents. 81 and square root square root of a, just to let you know, it is exactly the same as a to exponent 1 over 2. So this is y, the exponent is now 1 over 2, and 81 is 3. So what ended up happening here, we were able to convert each exponent as base of 3 exponent, which is very, very practical since the logarithm base is 3. The second logarithm base is 2. That's okay. So then we work towards changing, if possible, the expression as power of 2. So 16 is 2 to the power of 4 and further down to the power of 4. 128 by inspection is 2 to 7 and square root conversion into 1 over 2. Then you end up multiplying these two exponents like you would do it here. So let's see if that's the case. All right. So, indeed, now we have 3 to 9 because the multiplication and 4 times half 2. Over here we have 16 because of multiplication and 7 over 2. 7 times 1 over 2. 7 times 1 over 2 gives you 7 over 2. So this is why we see what we supposed to see. Slowly. Now, you are adding exponents because the same base. So 3 to exponent 9 plus 2 gives you 11. Over here, you are adding exponent as well. So 16 plus 7 over 2 gives you 39 over 2. If you change 16 into 32 over 2. Now we can extract 11 and 39 over 2 from the second logarithm. So logarithm 3 to base 3 will be is 1 and logarithm to base 2 of 2 is also 1. So this is why what you have is just exponent 11 minus the second exponent gives you this nice result. And the last question. So the challenge here is very similar with the previous example. Change to base 4. Why to base 4? Because your base of logarithm is 4. The logarithm base is 5. So your goal will be to change this into exponent 5. And base 5, and also the second term as well. So square root becomes exponent 1 over 2, 625 by inspection, 5 to 4. Same here, 16 cubed into 4 squared. Cube outside, and 64, 4 cubed. There you go. So the next step will be to combine exponents using exponent rule. So you would multiply, you would multiply. Same here, and eventually you would add and add again. Exactly. So this is why you have 6. This is why we have 3 over 2, and this is why over here we have 16 
plus 1 over 2 already added. So 16 plus 1 over 2 is 16 and a half, which is later written in one statement 33 over 2. Okay. The next step you would see will be combining exponent for that expression with base 4. And right away, they have calculated for us. How convenient. So, 6 plus 3 over 2. So, you will go 6 plus 3 over 2. So, this is 12 over 2 plus 3 gives you 15 over 2. Makes sense. And the last one is already simply drop down. So, logarithm to base 4 of 4 to exponent 15 over 2 becomes just a logarithm with 15 over 2 factored out logarithm to base 4, 4, which is 1. So this is why we have that value. Similarly, negative 33 over 2 comes from the 1 up above here. And finally, the difference is negative 9. So, there you go. Now we have found the value of these two questions. So I hope you understand exactly what we did. You have to follow the rules of logarithm. You must know them in order to be efficient and proficient with solving questions involving logarithm. This becomes very handy when you're working with equations, not only numerical expressions, but with the equation is absolute to know all of those rules. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, post it down below. Thank you. See you next time. Bye for now.